Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supply. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the LG washer or drain pump motor. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new drain pump motor. The drain pump motor is what pumps the water out of the washer. The main reason you'd be changing it out is if the motor shorted out and it's not pumping the water out. Now we can take the top off. We're going to remove the lower screws that hold the bracket to the body. Once we get those screws out, we can pull the top off. Now we can pull the top back. You want to pull it back just about an inch and a half so you can clear the stoppers. If you go back too far, you won't be able to lift it up because it'll hit the stoppers on the other side. So you just want to go about an inch and a half back. Next we can pull out the detergent drawer and press down on the center in the back to release it so we can pull it all the way out. Now we can remove the two Phillips screws Now we can unsnap the front control panel. There's some locking tabs that go along the whole length of it. So we're going to get those started and pull the panel off. Now that we have the console snapped off, we have two options. If you're just going to be working on the front here, you can swing it up out of the way. But if you need to work more inside, it's best just to disconnect it and get it out of the way. We have to disconnect these wire harnesses right here. So we're going to untwist these little holders and get the wires out. Then we can pull the wires out and disconnect them. All you have to do is find the release tab and press on it and pull it apart. Once you get them all off, you can lift the panel up a little bit, lean it forward, and feed these wires that we just disconnected through the hole and then you can pull the panel off. Now we can open up the door and remove the clamp that holds the gasket on. There's a spring located at the bottom that we can pry off so we want to take a small flathead screwdriver and carefully get behind it so we don't damage the gasket. Once you get behind it you can lift it out of the groove and go all the way around the door to release the gasket. Now that we have the clamp off, we can take the gasket and kind of get it off of the front panel so it's out of the way. And then we can reach in behind the door switch and disconnect the wire harness from the door switch. Press the release tab and pull it off the switch. Now that we have that disconnected, we can close the washer door. And then we can take a small flathead screwdriver and open up this small access panel right here going to come right off. There's nothing holding it on. Now that we have the cover off, we have access to inside. There's actually a little drain hose right here. If you're going to be working on the pump or any of the hoses on the inside, you want to take this plug out and make sure you have a dish on the floor and drain it into the dish. You're not going to get all the water out, but it's going to make it a lot less messier. And then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to remove the screw that holds in the trim on this panel. This little inner panel should just pull right off. Once you have this little trim piece out, it'll give us access to this lower Phillips screw that we have to take out. Now we can remove the four screws that go across the top and hold the panel on. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. When you're taking the last screw out, you want to make sure that you hold the panel onto the washer. There's nothing else really holding it on, and it may fall off. Now that you have all the screws off, we can lift the front panel off the washer.
Now that we have the front up, we have access to this whole pump and motor assembly. We're going to lay a towel down. We already drained it, but just in case there's any water left, we're going to put a towel down to catch it. And then we can remove the hoses. We're going to remove this one first. And we're going to take our pliers and remove the drain line. And then we can remove the tub to pump hose. And then we can remove the two Phillips screws that hold the whole assembly in. Now that we have the screws out, there's a little tab underneath that we have to press down in order to release it. Once you have that pressed down, then we can push the assembly back and get these wires out of the way. The drain hose that we drained earlier is going to come with it. And now that we have it out, we can disconnect the wires. The brown went to the end on this side and the black went to the L. And on the other side, the black went to the N and the blue went to the L. With the pump assembly removed, here's the tab that you have to release to pull it out. Now that we have everything disconnected, we can pull the assembly out. Here's the old drain pump motor next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. We do have to use our Phillips screwdriver and take the motor off the old assembly. So there's a few Phillips screws that hold it on. Once you have those screws out, you can lift it off and set the assembly aside for a second. To get the old cover off, we're just going to kind of flex it and get it off the old motor. Once you have it off, we can slide the new drain pump motor into it. Once you have the cover on, you can set it back into the assembly housing and we can put the screws back in. Now that you have everything reassembled, we can put it back in the washer. Now we can go ahead and put the assembly back in. We want to make sure that we get this hose out through the front. And then we can hook up our wires to this motor. And uh, black was N, and blue was L. Now they have it in, we can run the other wires up to the other motor. And on this end, the, the brown was N. And the black was L. Then we can lay the assembly down. You can pull out the drain hose to make sure it's out of the way. You can line it up with the grooves and snap it into place. Once you have it in, we can put in the Phillips screws that hold it in. And then we can reconnect our hoses. First, we'll grab the tub to pump hose and slide it all the way up. We can take our pliers and move up the clamp. Then we can put the drain hose back on and put the clamp down. Now we can hook up the recirculation hose, make sure it's not kinked, and then we can put the cap back on the drain hose. Now we can go ahead and put the front back on. We want to take and set it onto the three tabs. and make sure that uh, your hose doesn't get pinched in there. And then we can tilt it up and put in the four screws.
Next we can put back in this cover assembly. First we can put back in the little screw that holds the front panel to it. Next we can put the trim assembly back in. You want to pull out the drain hose and put it through the hole. Snap it into place. And then we can put the screw back in. And we can take the little drain hose and put it in the clip. And then we can put the front access panel on. And snap it closed. Now we can reach in behind the door gasket and grab the wire harness and hook it back up to the switch. Pull the gasket out so we can attach it to the front panel. We have to go around and make sure that the gasket is in this groove so when we put the spring clamp on it holds it in place. All right, now we can grab the spring clamp and we want to make sure the spring is down at 6 o'clock. Once we have it stretched around most of the way, we can put the vice grips on and very carefully stretch out the spring and get the clamp the rest of the way around. You want to make sure when you pull back on this that you pull straight back so you're not pulling out and pulling the gasket off. Now that we have it on, we can close the door. Put the console back in. We're going to feed the wires through the hole in the back panel and pull them through and then we can rotate the panel up into place and snap it in. Now that we have the wires pulled through, we can connect them back to the main wire harness. All you have to do is snap them together and make sure they lock. And then we can reconnect them to the wire harness holders. Now that we have the console on and connected, we can put in the screws that hold the soap dispenser body. Then we can put the detergent tray back in. All you have to do is line it up and then push the release lever in so you can slide it all the way in. Now we can put the top on. You want to set it down a little bit back from the front. You want to make sure that the stoppers go into these little cutouts so they can snap into their little grooves. And we can set the top down and push it forward to lock it into place. Now we can put the screws back in that hold the brackets onto the top. Now that you're done repairing the appliance, you can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and give it a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.